there's a few different ways to test the spark. You can do it the traditional way, just by taking an old spark plug, putting it in the boot, grounding it, and seeing if spark jumps across. But you don't have to have a very powerful spark for it to be able to jump that small gap, and spark might not be powerful enough to ignite the fuel mixture. So these spark testers here work a little better. This one is made for testing coil packs on a car, and this little piece of plastic in there makes it harder for the electricity to jump through to the outside here. This is a lot higher electricity and voltage to be able to get it to jump there. So this probably would work, but it might not have enough power to go through. But this tester, when you spin this, it makes the gap bigger and bigger. So you can see how far your electricity can jump. So if we hook this up to the boot, then we can test it and see how far we can spin this out until it doesn't jump. So there'll be three reasons why your small engine won't work normally. So it might be the spark. If you have bad spark, the engine won't start. If you aren't getting enough fuel or there's no fuel or the carburetor is bad, that's another reason, or if the compression is bad. In this video, we'll be testing the spark and how to know if you have a good spark. So now we'll use the spark plug test. If we put the spark plug in the boot, we'll feel it snap in. We'll try to rest it right up here. It can be a little tricky since it doesn't have the clip like some of the other ones. There we go. And it'll help if you turn off the lights. You wanna to try to get it in a position where you can see the spark. Now with the lights off, we can go ahead and crank it and see if there's a spark. I could see a little bit of a spark there, so we know that this seems to be working. It can always be a little tricky to get it to stay up there, but you should only need to crank it about once, and then you'll know if you have good spark. I really like this tester because you can see how far the spark will go and how strong it is, and that'll tell you if the spark is strong enough. What we can do is put it in the boot here. And then what I really like is this clip. You can just clip it to the ground here and it's much easier. It'll stay way better. Now with the lights off, we can go ahead and crank it and keep spinning it out and we'll see how far the spark will go. So we'll take it out a little bit more. We'll see what happens here. Okay, looks like we have a little bit less, but it's always important to make sure you're getting good connection to the ground, because if you're not getting good connection to the ground, you won't be getting good spark. Okay, that made it a little bit better, so now we'll spin it out more. Do one more turn, see what happens here. I can see a few sparks there, and that's at quite a pretty good distance. We probably have about half an inch. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll spin it out a few more times and see if it'll be able to do it from this far. Looks like that's as far as it'll go. So it's kind of hard to see through the plastic, but we have about a little bit more than half an inch of spark jumping across. I mean, that's pretty impressive. If the spark can generate that much to go across Quite a big gap. So this is the spark plug tester for coil packs. It might be a little bit overkill. We know that the spark is good now because it jumped a pretty good gap. So we have strong spark, but let's just see what happens if we use this to test it. Now with the lights off, let's just see if this has any spark. So it did shoot a spark. I think I saw it do it about once. I mean, it wasn't consistent, but this is a little bit overkill for such a small engine. And that's why I like this spark plug tester because it can get bigger or smaller and it works on a lot of engines. So in order for the engine to work, we have to have spark compression and fuel. And in this video, we've verified that the spark is not the problem. We definitely have good spark. So now we'll just do a quick compression test. And if we fail the compression test, we know that's the problem. But if we pass the compression test, we know we're not getting fuel 
So it probably would be the carburetor or fuel lines. We just screw the compression tester in just like that and it keeps it airtight. And now it should be around from 80 to 120 is good compression. So we'll crank it over. And we're right there at 120, so we know we have good compression. Now we'll pump it up and uh, give it a crank and see if it works.